makes Justin Jefferson so challenging to Man, a little bit of everything, you know, obviously a, a super dynamic athlete, speed, quickness, burst. Um, he's got catch radius. He's got, you know, in, just insane body control. And at the same time, on top of all that stuff, they're featuring him in a very cool way. You know, they're, they're, they're getting him on the move, putting him all over the field, running a whole wide array of route. So it's, uh, it's hard to get a beat on him. Dalvin Cook uh, at running back to them. You guys obviously had two strong defensive performances in a row, but was the run defense a little below what you wanted, and do you need to step it up this week against Dalvin? Yeah, I think we would all agree it wasn't to our standard in that way, and I think it's also an indication that from a defensive perspective, we're moving in the in the right direction. Um, the amount of uh, like, guys were not satisfied with last game. Yeah, we held them to 10 points, but wasn't as clean as, as we'd like it to be. So um, what a great opportunity to shore up our run defense against a really good running team like this is. You know, good scheme, good coaching. And then on top of all that, you take Dalvin Cook, who's an explosive runner, as we all know. So said yesterday he would love to travel with guys like Justin. Is that something you guys would ever do? Or is it, you know, I know, the way, I know your philosophy is right. sides. How, how do you approach that? I, I think there, 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 there could be a time and place, you know. It's just as of right now, we have just such confidence in both our guys, you know, that uh, that Sauce is excellent, obviously having a great year, but DJ is playing at an equally um, high level. So, and then even if he gets in the slot, like we have a lot of trust in in Michael Carter. So, um, very confident with the guys that we have, you know. So, running as of today isn't something that I, I think that we do. How much did you know DJ before he got here? I didn't know him at all. What has he done for you guys? Yeah, he just, I mean, the, the skill set is obvious. The production on the field is obvious. Um, I guess what people don't see is the dog that he is behind closed doors, the way he pushes people, the, the way he holds people accountable, um, the way he holds coaches accountable. Like, he is very, um, he is constantly asking questions and wants clarification and wants clarity and wants, you know, so it's, uh, he's not only, like, on the field, this dog, as far as the competitor, but he's also a dog when it comes to trying to get better and seek information and and keep growing from a football perspective, from a football mentality perspective. So he's just brought he's brought mentality, he's brought talent, um, he's brought us a corner that we have a, a ton of trust in to cover anybody. Does that make him like a almost a perfect complement to Sauce? We have this young guy, high draft pick. You know, with a veteran who's like trying to like really establish himself and kind of imparting that wisdom and so to speak. Absolutely. You know, it's it. We talked about it um, a lot. You know, going into the off season, um, and especially when a guy like um, Ahmad was potentially available for us, providing. Um, a really strong example of what it's supposed to look like, you know, from a process standpoint, from a, obviously from a, um, a performance standpoint on the field, you know. So to have a guy like DJ Reed, it's one thing for a coach to say it, you know, it's just like a parent to say it. It's another thing for it to be demonstrated, you know, and, and he gives us uh, a demonstrated example of what a great pro looks like. What do you say to a player like DJ Reed who seemed to have perfect coverage on that Pringle touchdown, yet he still catches it? How do you evaluate a play like that? He would tell you that he, he should have gone for the pass breakup as opposed to the interception. Um, I think it, is there some technical things that we can always improve on there? Yeah, there is. Um, and at times, play, players just make plays. You know, it was, a, it was an exceptional play, um, not one that we'd like to give up, and one that I think that we, we, we wish we had back. We could have defended better, but at the same time, uh, exceptional play by them. How have you seen him handle bigger receivers? Justin's a bigger guy. We saw the catch against, obviously, against Buffalo. How has DJ handled bigger guys? He, he's done well. Like, that's something that, um, you know, not knowing him, like, you just – purely look on paper and you see a smaller stature um, but then you get around him and you see the way he plays and conducts himself and his play style and all that and it's um, he doesn't play small by any means so um, we don't feel as much angst with him on bigger receivers because he's so tough and he's strong and although doesn't have great height necessarily has great arm length so um, he still has some length in that way. As a player and as a coach, you've seen a lot of quarterbacks come and go. Just being around Mike White, what, what do you think his upside is? And do you, could you see him developing into a, a long-term franchise quarterback? Um, 
In all honesty, I've been so consumed with our side of the ball, uh, you know, that it's hard for me to, to truly assess that. I got a ton of confidence in him from the standpoint of um, when I did get to see him when he was running our scout team, um, he gave us a great look. I really felt like there was a lot of times he was better than the quarterback that we faced that Sunday, you know, and he gave us, you know, just amazing preparation. So, um, yeah, I got a lot of confidence in Mike. I think he can be a, he can be a very good quarterback in this league. Kirk Cousins, just kind of what you've seen from him this uh, year. Yeah, he's. I think he's one of those guys that um, I still remember when I first was introduced to this this system, this offensive system, and hearing guys that coached it from Kyle Shanahan to Sean McVay and and on and on, and obviously Mike with us. Uh, they always had. Uh, this very high opinion of him and his ability to run this particular offense. Obviously, we run similar systems to them. Um, you want guys with, you know, with timing, with arm strength, the guys that can um, not only, you know, throw the short intermediate stuff, make good decisions, but rip the play action balls, the the reads and the, the glances and all the stuff that this this system has in it. So, uh, so he's exceptional in that way, you know, and he's, I think he's really in a system now that suits his, 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 uh, his skill set and, um, and now give him some, some weapons like he has and, and you got a problem. You know, it's a, it's a very, very hard offense to defend in a lot of ways. How much does it help your, your preparation if, if they're running a system that's similar to, to what you see in practice? Um, it helps a little bit, yeah, and at the same time, Every one of these coaches that have adopted this system, they've, they've put their own wrinkle on it. You know, Mike has, has his own wrinkle that Sean does, that Kyle does, that all these guys that run it. Um, so although there are some similar principles that um, definitely help because we have some time on task and we have some, we have some reps of it, um, there are some wrinkles that are very different than what we see, you know, from, from day to day with our offense. So yes and no, I guess the answer to that. How has um, added a weapon like TJ Hawkinson helped your offense? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, Th to have uh, a tight end with that sort of receiving ability is uh, it's a pain in the butt, you know, because he's got side, he's got catch radius like tight ends do, but he's got um, at times I would say movement like like some receivers in this league, you know. So um, he can be a mismatch in that way, you know. He he's bigger than than you want him to be with some of the DBs, and he's quicker than you want him to be with some of the linebackers. So um, he's definitely got some of that tweener that um, can be an issue, a guy we have to account for, for sure. How have teams generally been covering Jefferson? Is he mostly getting a safety over the top? Has that been commonplace? Yeah, it, it's been a little bit of everything. You know, I think maybe the 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 best example is you watch the New England game. They went east, west, right, left, up, down. They did a little bit of all of it, and uh, and he had success against a lot of it. You know, and, and he's had a su success against um, a lot of different versions of double bracket, whatever you want to call. I think. Uh, you just got to keep them guessing. You know, that's the best way. You know, you start to get booked for stuff, especially with a really good player like that, and uh, they'll take advantage of it. How much, uh, as far as, like, playing other receivers, and this is like a Tyreek Hill or Jamar Chase, how, how can that help you in a game like this playing against a guy like Justin Jefferson? Yeah, it, it helps from the standpoint of, you know, you got to shine a light on him and you got to know where he's at at all times and, and you got to know what he runs from each one of these spots because, you know, he is so unique in his skill set but also unique in the way that they feature him. Um, the fact that we got a little experience with Tyreek and, and Jamar, um, it helps, you know, but at the same time he is unique to, to both those guys. Not to say he's better or worse, he's just different, you know. As a defensive coordinator, how did you deal with the – thing before the last game with the quarterback situation with the Bears, Fields wasn't going to play, right? and then Simeon was going to play, but then there was a report that Peter was going to play. Right. How did you deal with all that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was funny. Um, not that there was a ton of angst, but there was, there was definitely a uh, – we had a clear p plan for each guy. You know, we had moments in practice last week where it was – the guy that we saw, and then there was times where it was Fields, you know, and and as the Peterman stuff started to come out, and we started to do our due diligence as far as researching what he did, we thought, okay, maybe he's more of the Fields plan, you know, from the standpoint in preseason he ran some of the quarterback run stuff that they put in for Fields, so um, that was it, you know, if Peterman played, we probably would have done more of our Fields plan, you know, we didn't get him, so we played the plan that we, we actually practiced the majority of the week. Jeff Bracehoff seems to last few weeks really kind of get to a group where he's 
contributing even more and, and making his presence felt. Yep. Um, what have you seen over the last month or so with him? And what he's done with you guys. Yeah, he, he just he keeps getting better, you know, and he's such a good compliment, especially when you got a guy like Quinn who's absolutely going off right now and an absolute problem. You know, uh, people can't block him. So obviously your edge guys don't get as much attention as they might because of Quinnen. And um, now all of a sudden Bryce gets this opportunity to get one-on-ones with tackles. And um, he's got such explosiveness and speed and get off. And um, he's got this ability to turn the toe and turn it tight at the top of a, a pass rush that is so unique and it's such a superpower. So um, yeah, we're, we, are, we are lucky to have him. You know, and it kind of shifts it, the ebb and flow of, of how guys are doing. Now that he starts going off, maybe he gets a little bit more attention now. All of a sudden, our interior guys get a little bit more one-on-ones, you know, or the other edge rusher gets a one-on-one. And, and uh, we, we are very fortunate that we have, in my opinion, eight to nine really good defensive linemen, starter caliber guys, that um, when one, one guy gets, you know, the chip or the turn, the other guys are going to go off. And vice versa. One thing, one thing you mentioned right there with Quinnen, is, is that something that you're seeing consistently now where he's getting double teamed and maybe it wasn't something so much last season or earlier in the season? Yeah, and then that's just the nature of this league. The more production you have, the better you're playing, the more you're you're gonna get the turn, you're gonna get the chip, you're gonna get the double teams. Um, and you're seeing that. But at the same time you're seeing Quinnen um, as much as we try to schematically free him up and get him one on ones at times, um, he's still winning. You know, he's still winning the double team. So uh, he's having a great year. Yeah, he's having a, f a fantastic year.